Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to the Omni Coalition News Show, also known as TalkNest, T-O-C-N-S. This show is an amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off-the-wall, and otherwise things you don't normally see anymore from most news sources these days. During a time of political overabundance and divisiveness, we present you with more unifying topics to discuss. For links to those articles, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Zander, and today is um, Friday, Freya's Day, um, October 14th, 2022. My brain just, like, died for a second there. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the news, shall we? Uh, starting us off from Rebel News, Virginia Democrat lawmaker uh, drafts legislation to criminalize parents who refuse to affirm their child's gender identity. Oh, God. Here we go. Democrat lawmaker announced new legislation that would prosecute parents if they do not affirm their child's choice of gender identity. Uh, Virginia Delegate Elizabeth Guzman made the announcement saying that she seeks to introduce a bill that will hold parents criminally liable for not affirming their children. Quote, the day that Governor Youngskin wanted to implement this policy, I immediately texted the policy and uh, uh, the, the policy lead of that committee and said, this is how we're uh, going to push back, end quote, Guzman said uh, to ABC7 News on her bill, of, uh, of her bill on Thursday. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was talking about this earlier uh, in uh, Discord, and, um, like, uh, the fight is really going to come down to, like, you know, right now, uh, the mama bears, as my dad calls them, um, all of the, uh, all of the mothers, you know, pushing back against all of the, uh, wokeness and, you know, stuff like that in, um, uh, in, uh, schools that are really being pushed and, like, you know, I, I have a lot to say about this, you know, I'm just gonna, I mean, you know, long story short, it's scary, you know, I'm not gonna get into more uh, details than that, it's just frightening what we're, uh, what we're going into. So let's move on up. We have got some more here from Rebel News. California bans companies from charging a pink tax on customers. So this is, uh, oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, because, like, okay, so essentially, like, all these feminine products, uh, it's the same exact thing as the male products, but they just color it pink and, you know, price it higher to give the illusion that it's, like, oh, specially designed for, you know, female or whatever, when it's actually not. Um, it says here, California has banned the pink tax on consumer goods, effectively prohibiting businesses from selling products for women at a higher price than men's products. What I was just saying. The measure AB 1287, which was signed into law last month by Gavin Newsom, finally he actually does something right for once, uh, stated that a business, quote, shall not charge a different price for any two goods that are substantially similar if those goods are priced differently based on the gender of the individuals for whom the goods are marketed and intended, end quote. Good. I, I never thought I'd ever agree with this guy. Um, this move comes following a push by critics of the pink tax, which is a widely documented phenomenon where companies design two sets of the same product with marked up prices for the products marketed toward women. So, yeah, right there. So, uh, but yeah, like, uh, of course, for more th for further reading on this topic, please refer to the, uh, the description, the underbar. Um, you know, it has uh, links to all of these, actually, I believe. Does it? Let me uh, let me check. It should. Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. Anyway, moving on up. This happened today, unfortunately. Uh, beloved Harry Potter actor Robbie Coltrane passed away at the age of 72. The guy who played Hagrid. May he rest in peace. Beloved Scottish actor Robbie Coltrane, best known for his role as Hagrid in the Harry Potter series of movies, has passed away at the age of 72. Coltrane's agent, Belina Wright, confirmed the news that the actor had died in a hospital near Falkirk, Scotland. Describing Coltrane as a unique talent, Wright added uh, that the doctors, uh, that the actor's role as Hagrid, quote, brought joy to children and adults alike all over the world, end quote. So, yeah. May he rest in peace. He, he... Yeah, that's really important. Like, uh, uh, while we were doing the, uh, the history show earlier today, actually, um, one of uh, one of my friends uh, in the server uh, posted while we were d actually doing the burst. He posted a news article uh, to this, and I unfortunately didn't see it, so I couldn't uh, talk about it back then on that show earlier today. But uh, now I can talk about it here, and this is really sad. I mean, I was never really a fan of Harry Potter, but you know, he he hammered uh, Hagrid out of the park, and uh, you know, it's 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 sad whenever we lose celebrities, you know, or people that we, you know, idolize or, you know, we've enjoyed, like, you know, one way or the other, so, 
So, but yeah, as I've said, you know me, rest in peace, and uh, we shall see him. Uh, we shall see him again when it's our turn. So, let's move on up here. Meet for the elite. Warning over threat of methane tax. More from Rebel News here. Um, the, the traditional Aussie barbecue will be a thing of the past if Labor pledged to cut methane emissions. Uh, Nationals uh, leader David Litterproof has warned for Little Proud. Uh, the government is expected to announce this month that Australia will join an American-led push to cut methane emissions by 30% over the next decade. The push comes as New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern infuriated farmers by announcing a plan to tax livestock burps. Litterproof said that any moves to cut methane in Australia would make meat unaffordable and, to, and be the death of barbecue. Uh, death of barbecue being a quote. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. So now they're gonna start adding a methane tax to meat. So this is, uh, this is how they force us to eat bugs. Well, time to get your own cows, huh? You know? We should all become farmers. Okay, let's move on up here. More from Rebel News. Chinese police station in Sydney flew under the radar until now. Here we go again. A Chinese police station set up in Sydney was similar to dozens around the world being used by the Chinese Communist Party to track down dissidents, a human rights organization has claimed. Human rights watchdog safeguard defenders told the ABC China had established police stations known as contact points in 30 different countries under the pretext of helping citizens renew national ID cards, passports, and driver's licenses. But the group alleges these stations are also being used to track down and facilitate the return of dissidents to China. The ABC reported this week that an, that an official contact point had been established in Sydney in 2019, but flew under the radar in the Australian and international press. The ABC was careful to say uh, it was not aware of any evidence it has been utilized for any of the activities suggested by safeguard defenders about other overseas sites, end quote. That was a whole, the whole thing was a quote there. Uh, Safeguard Defenders spokeswoman Laura Har said the police stations were a risk to Chinese people in Australia who opposed the CCP and to their family members still in China. So yeah, that this is a serious issue here. Um, you know, the whole world's just been infiltrated. Everything's just gone to craziness, and I, there's obviously no simple solution to anything. Everything is so intertwined. This is going to be the next ten years are going to be extremely brutal, people. So hunker down and. You know, we're going to have to fight it. Let's move on up here to Oddity Central. The world's smallest chicken is taking the Chinese pet scene by storm. Rootin' Chicken, a domestic uh, hybrid dubbed the world's smallest chicken, has become incredibly popular in China lately, fueling a veritable pet craze. This is interesting. Technically, the Rootin' is, uh, the Rootin and Chicken is not a chicken. It is a cross between a quail and a patridge or a partridge, but people have dubbed it the world's smallest chicken and a nickname is stuck. To be fair, it fits so as the birds are about the size of an average human fist and weigh only about 50 grams. Uh, they are super cute as well and their size makes them suitable for relatively small enclosures that, some with, that come with lights, plants, stairs, and even dollhouse-like sleeping quarters. Well, that's really cool, you know? So, like, if you're going to have chickens, you know, have chickens for the eggs and the meat, like, you know have animals for the right reasons like this this is just more instances of humans owning things for the sake of owning things i mean i don't want to sound like a leftist but they're animals they need to be free so unless they serve a purpose other than just you know eye candy then yeah anyway let's move on up man allergic to his own orgasm actively avoids sleeping with girlfriend well i'm not going to read about this because it might go against the terms of service. But, uh, yeah, link to this will be in the, uh, in the description below. Um, and that's, uh, that's just awful. Um, man. Anyway, uh, let's see here. More from Audit Central. Doctor removes 23 forgotten contact lenses from patient's eye. Yeah, this is why I have these, you know? I don't care how they made me look. They help me look, you know? A California ophthalmologist recently shocked the internet by posting a video of herself extracting 23 for forgotten contact lenses from a patient's eye. Last month, uh, Katharina Kurtiva, an eye doctor out of Newport Beach in California, posted an Instagram video of herself carefully removing a few contact lenses from a patient's eye. A few maybe isn't the right word to use in this context, seeing as Kurtiva claims to have removed no less than 23 
old contact lenses from her patient. An elderly woman had forgotten in her eye for months, maybe even years. The video went viral a few days ago, leaving millions scratching their heads about someone could simply forget that so many contact lenses in their eye. Yeah, that scares the hell out of me. You know, like, what happens to the eyelashes you get in your eye that you don't get out? You know, like, I, you know, they do pile up in the back, you know, and then they get digested somehow. I don't know. They get reabsorbed back in the body, but that's frightening to think that there's foreign objects behind my eye just slowly melting away. Um, let's move on up here. More from Audio Central. Gadget Funeral, the lucrative service of preserving old and broken gadgets. A unique gadget funeral service allows people to preserve outdated and broken devices that they have become attached to. They say that you shouldn't get attached to material things, but most of us can't really help it. Whether it's our first car, the house we grew up in, or even an old phone, we tend to get attached to our worldly possessions. And since mobile phones and tablets have become almost an extension of ourselves, it makes sense that some of us have trouble upgrading even when it's obvious that our old gadgets are struggling. That's where China's gadget, once again China, okay. Gadget funeral service be, uh, business came in, uh, allowing users to preserve their obsolete devices as framed, deconstructed works of art that can be hung around and admired forever. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I'd wait till something like that ha pops up uh, more domestically. Um, you know, but yeah, that's a that's a pretty cool idea. Uh, an old, uh, wow, look at an old phone, old remote. Or is that part of the phone? I think that's all the phone. Yeah. So an old watch. Oh, uh, 3DS. Interesting. Let's move on up to the mirror. Warning to drivers over 55 as new highway code rules pose significant risks. Experts say that there is a significant cause for concern for drivers over the age of 55 since a number of new highway code rules were brought in this year. Research suggests that not enough people are aware of the new rules posing a risk to themselves and fellow drivers. According to a new survey, just 1 in 10 UK drivers would be able to pass the, their theory tests if they were to retake them today. Uh, 1 in 5 drivers over the age of 55 admit they have not retrained their knowledge of the highway code since passing their test. With a large chunk of drivers having not revisited the rules, experts say it poses a risk to all road users. You should renew your, in, in, your knowledge every single year. Every single year in January, go down to your DMV or, you know, go, this is UK here, so it's... I don't know what they call it over there, but in the U.S. out here, it's the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. And get a driver's uh, guide. You know, it, it, it tells you all the old rules, all the new ones, all the ones like in the works. Like, you know, oh, hey, be, be aware. This may pass later this year. It's in the it's in the Senate or whatever, you know. Like, every year, get a new driver's handbook. And it's not that hard. Like, you know, in the DMV now, it costs like a buck, you know. Like, whoop de doo Like... Driving is a privilege, not a right. And I know I'm just going off about this, but that is a two-ton death machine with controlled explosions under the hood. Do not screw around. Update yourself. Stay in practice. Okay? And, you know, then the world will be a slightly better place. It's not that difficult. Moving on up to more from the mirror here. We can't get a new mortgage, so we're raffling off our family home for three euros a ticket. The three pounds. I don't know. I think that's pounds, I think. Yeah. Euros, I well, no. Oh, wait. Uh, a couple have decided to raffle off their home because they can't get a new mortgage, they revealed. Uh, D-Clan Garrett and his wife, Leonie Webb, are auctioning off their four-bedroom family home for... for uh, family home for... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Why can't I talk? Family home for just three pounds a ticket. With seven kids under the age of 12, the couple were struggling to fit the whole family around the dinner table, as well as on the sofas to watch TV in their converted bungalow. After repeatedly being turned down for a mortgage due to the size of their uh, brood, the family of nine opted for an unconventional way of selling their home in Western Supermare, North Somerset. The couple did research online and realized they could auction off 300,000 tickets for a three euro a pop to raise the funds for a new home. I might just purchase a ticket, because why not? You know, then I can sell it for market value or something, or figure out something, I don't know. But yeah, so go uh, go check this out. But two more articles here. One uh, from UPI. World's oldest practicing doctor at the age of 100 has no plans to retire. Well, 
that's all cool and all, but uh, I'd rather have my daughter be a little bit younger, you know, no offense to you, man. A 100-year-old Ohio man who holds a Guinness World Record for being the world's oldest practicing doctor says he has no plans to retire anytime soon. Dr. Howard Tucker of Cleveland was initially certified as the world's oldest practicing doctor in February of 2021 when he was 98 years and 231 days old. Tucker, who is now 100, still continues to work full-time with his typical day lasting from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Good good for you, man. Like, you know, hey, you know, like... It's, it's, it's admirable, you know? Like, like... <sighs> the work ethic in this guy is amazing. Because, like, you know, think about this. When you retire, then what do you do with your life? Do you have any hobbies? Do you have any interests? Or are you just going to just fester in your home and slowly go insane? You know? People need activity. You need to have something. And if you're not working, you got to keep yourself occupied. You know, like what I do with this show. Like, I can't get a job out here in California because of this. You know? So gotta do something man gotta do something with your life let's move on up to our last article here another one from upi levi's jeans from 1880s auction for eighty-seven thousand four hundred dollars after mine shaft discovery uh the pants were found in an abandoned mine in the american west by self-described denim archaeologist michael harris and were sold at durango vintage festivus a four-day celebration of denim on the outskirts of aztec new mexico the jeans, which feature a buckle back adjuster along the seat, were purchased by Kyle Haunter and Zip Stevenson. Hunt, Haunter paid, uh, Hutner paid 90% of the price, while Stevenson contributed the remaining uh, 10. Stevenson, who owns and operates the Denim Doctors Repair Shop in Los Angeles, said the pants were a rare discovery. Quote, these jeans are extremely rare, especially in, these fan- in this fantastic worn condition and size, end quote, he told CNN. So, yeah, go check it out. Um, that's awesome. Like, I was wondering if that had anything to do with uh, the Cerro Gordo stuff, because I've been following that guy. Um, anyway, that appears to conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar of the description for any links you may find interesting, uh, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. I stream this on my channel currently, uh, the Aosander one. Uh, but we're gonna. I I gotta get us on to Twitch. I gotta see if I can switch us to Twitch. Twitch Twitch. You know. Anyway, for your dose of different, odd, and otherwise unknown news, we stream Monday through uh, well, Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. For all of you and all of us, I was A.O. Xander, and you are you, until you catch us uh, next Monday, actually. Or if you enjoy history, check us out uh, 10 in the morning tomorrow Pacific time for TDH, the State and History, our history show. Anyway, whatever you do, if you do so wish, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Until later, toodles!